Hey everybody, gonna whip off a quick uh, flea market, tool store, whatever, fine segment. <laughs> uh, got a variety of sources this stuff came from, but uh, just gonna want to knock this stuff out of the way and then show you the, uh, the the main item that I'm dying to get a look at inside the box here that came in today. All right, so uh, first off, I went uh, went to a uh, uh, junk store that opened up in town uh, Thrift shop I guess is what you would call it and uh, I actually picked up uh, last week I picked up I saw a guitar neck sticking out of a box It's just the neck of the guitar and it said PV uh, I think it was a T15 uh, Guitar neck and then when I dug through the box I found the body the pick guard the pickups the bridge um, a lot of the little pieces, basically somebody had taken the whole guitar completely apart and then thrown it in a box. And, uh, this gentleman cleans out houses and sheds and things like that and he got it. So, uh, I scored that entire guitar for five bucks in pieces. Unfortunately, all of the screws are missing. But it turns out it's a 1980s vintage guitar, natural finish. Uh, it might actually be worth more in parts based on what I've seen on eBay. And uh, so I don't have that down here, so I can't show you. But you can Google that. Uh, PV, P E V E Y is the name of the company. They were uh, more well known for their amplifiers. Um, but in the 80s, they made, it, they made some guitars. And this one is a uh, genuine made in the USA model. So it wasn't a high, high end guitar back then. Uh, but it was made in the USA, so that says something. Uh, so then, uh, I went back there today and uh, just wanted to see if he had brought anything else in from that because he said there were some other boxes there. And there was a bunch of audio cables and stuff there. And I was digging through it and I found these uh, these nippers right here, these cutters. This little pair of dykes. And I was looking at them and I was like, boy, they really got nice handles on them. They seem well made. I, uh, you know, gave him the old, held him up to the light, and no light showing through the jaws, meaning that nobody uh, abused the, uh, nobody tried cutting any screws or anything ridiculous with these over the years. They're still in good shape. They're just a little bit loose this way. I noticed there's a screw here, and I hadn't tried tightening that. Yep, that took care of that, no problem. Okay. And, uh, go, come to find out, looked on the inside here, and... These are Sandvik Lindstrom RX8150s. These are actually uh, really high quality cutters. I didn't, I didn't know Sandvik actually made anything like this. Of course, I've heard of you know Sandvik, uh, Sandvik Chiz. You know, make myself a Sandvik. Never mind. All right, so uh, I got these for a buck. I was really happy with that. Nice little score there. And then went to the used tool store today and was looking for an inch and a half wrench because the darn Alorus tool post has a big old inch and a half nut on the top. Actually, I think it might even be metric because I just tried it and this wrench is just a little bit loose on it. But I figured an inch and a half would work. And rather than having to go steal my inch and a half socket and break a bar every time I wanted to loosen that, I wanted a dedicated wrench I could keep over by the lathe. Well, I stopped at Harbor Freight, and I was going to pick up just a uh, cheapo Pittsburgh Tools Harbor Freight inch and a half combination wrench. And I had actually planned on getting the wrench and uh, keeping the box in and cutting the crescent end off and rounding it kind of like this, you know, and going through the whole thing and drilling a hole so I could hang it over by the uh, lathe on a, you know, rack or something. And I was going to do all that and come to find out Pittsburgh, uh, I'm sorry, Harbor Freight doesn't sell the individual wrenches in those large sizes. So you'd have to go with like Craftsman or something like that, and that's an expensive wrench. And I didn't find one at the flea market over the weekend. Uh, so I went to my used tool store that I've frequented in the past, and lo and behold, I found amongst his wrenches, um, he had some combination wrenches too, but I found this old Williams this is an early forged Williams wrench for five bucks. And I said, you know what? I just like the old look to it. Figure I got a nice old lathe. Might as well uh, have a nice old wrench to go with it. 
So, that'll work fine. Okay. You can see it's a little sloppy. So this is actually not... It can't be a fractional, because it's such a small amount. I bet you that's a, a metric, metric nut they put on there. Anyways, this is going to be fine. Um, I don't think I want to drill a hole and hang this one because this is a nice old early wrench that's relatively unmolested. So I think what I'll do is uh, at some point I'll probably make a rack up here and uh, maybe just make a slot in the rack to put that in like that. In the meantime, i just put it over here on the tray. So I was there and I had only I was only getting the wrench and it was looking like it was going to turn into another uh, another dry day at the uh, tool store and it's been like three weeks in a row that I've gone there or maybe not every week but it's like like the last three times I went there I was pretty much disappointed and either ended up buying next to nothing or just buying some little inconsequential thing. So since I was only buying the wrench I had seen these a while back and uh, noticed that they were still sitting there. These are Travers Tool for Precision Machine Vices, Precision Jaws, Aircraft Alloy Aluminum Machined Flat and Parallel Within One Thousandth of an Inch, Universal Use Soft Jaws, All Angle Lock, AccuLock, Lock Tight, and Similar Precision Machine Vices, Travers Tool Company, Flushing, New York. So these are just some big aluminum auxiliary jaws for your vise, okay? And he had 15 bucks on these, and they had been there for so long that I picked them up today. I said, "Hey, Jim, you've had these for a while. How about 10 bucks?" And he said, "Yeah, sure." So uh, I got these for 10. So. The only thing I'm not sure of, well, I guess I shouldn't take that off. I just got to double check and make sure they're going to fit the Kurt Vice. But I'm assuming that maybe this is a pretty standard spacing. I guess I shouldn't assume anything, huh? Well, I'm not going to be able to verify it positively without taking the, uh, without taking this jaw off. But, just eyeballing it, I would say, oh yeah, you betcha, that's a match. That's a match. So, they're a little overly wide, but so now I got a pair of soft jaws for my vise. Oh, gee whiz, you know what? I wonder if these are too, just occurred to me, I wonder if these are too deep. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. So anywho, got those. So that was all today that I got that stuff at the tool store, but this past weekend I went to my flea market, my local flea market, and I saw my uh, my regular tool guy that I buy from, and uh, I actually uh, was there looking for uh, an inch and a half wrench, an old one like that one I just showed you, and he didn't have anything, he said he'd keep an eye out for me, but while I was there I'd seen that he had brought in a few other things, and I saw this little arbor press sitting on the floor there, and I was like, oh, that's a nice little arbor press. And then I uh, looked at it, and he had a sticker on it for 25 bucks. And, you know, it's got the, uh, got the right plate on it. And it is a Phase 2, which is a made in China. This is, like, sold through, like, the Enco catalog or whatever. This is a Phase 2... This is a one-ton. This is a Phase 2 one-ton arbor press. This moves nice and free. The plate is a little... Yeah, there you go. A little bit of rust on that. Never hurt anybody. All right, so nice little arbor press, and I said, "Oh, that's a nice little arbor press." I said, "Oh," I said, "Jesus!" I said, "If I needed another one, I'd be on that, but I don't really need another one." But then I was, you know, talking to him and looking around, and then I just said, "Just for the hell of it," I forgot what I ended up picking up, something, and uh, I said to him, "I said, hey, can you do twenty bucks? Matter of fact, what the hell else did I buy there?" I bought something else there before I bought this. So where's that other thing I bought? Oh, that's bugging me now. Anyways, so I said, uh, hey, can you do 20 bucks on that arbor press? And he was like, ah, uh, you know, 
He said, well, what do I got on? And I said, you got 25. And once I told him he had 25 on, he was like, yeah, okay. So I got this arm press for 20 bucks. And even though I don't need another one, um, it's a nice size. For 20 bucks, it's, I'm not going to get hurt on this. I, I'll, I'll, I'll sell this at some point if I have to or want to. But the reason why I don't really need an arbor press is because I got all these other arbor presses. I've shown these in past videos, but just real quick. Uh, this is uh, this is an itty bitty greener number one, okay. And then I got another one. This is another number one greener. This one I kind of like the style a little bit more, and it's got also got the placard and the embossing. So this might be a newer one. Um, this one somebody put a spring in there, so it returns automatically. And somebody did a little bit of drilling on this thing here so they kind of buggered that up a little bit but i i paid very little for these i think i paid five or ten bucks a piece for these actually i remember this was part of a package deal it's even a little oiling caps here so i got these and i got that one and part of the same deal where i got those two little greenards i got this one the guy had this one in the back of his garage and this one's a bit of a mystery. This one has an oval with PM, a little placard attached with an, a PM. So I don't know what company that is. But this is not a U.S. made and it's not a Chinese made. It's clearly marked. It's embossed right into the, uh, the main arm there. Japan. So this is a Japanese made Arbor Press. And it actually seems like it's really well put together. And it's got a big number two embossed on this side. So I'm thinking that's a two-ton. All right, so that's uh, the other side of that one there. And you can clearly see it's clearly see it's marked Japan there. And then a little blue PM. And that brings us to my pride and joy, my, my largest hour press. This is my Dake number one. Um, this is considerably bigger than that last one, even though it might not look it. So I'm not actually not sure that so this is a number one, but I know that's gotta be more than a one ton press. So I'm not sure how those run. It also has a one zero one embossed in it down below. Um but that's that's a big sucker there. Well, relatively speaking. My plan is to build a stand for that at some point. Right now I just got it on one of those little furniture dollies so I can wheel it out of my way. That sucker's heavy. Oh, so I was around the corner from Harbor Freight and I had asked for this for Christmas and didn't get it. And so I decided I was going to finally break down and buy it. I had gotten the catalog in and seen that it was on sale. It's always on sale. This is a Chinese made Chicago electric chainsaw sharpener, benchtop one. And I had bought a, uh, it was actually marketed under Oregon Tools, um, handheld electric sharpener. Uh, comes with these little cylindrical stones. And I bought that at Tractor Supply, and it cost me about 30 bucks. And the collet on the thing is junk. So, invariably, it, it the, uh, the little stones want to slide out when you're using it. And the stones, because they're, they're really little and cylindrical, they tend to burn up kind of quickly. So I wanted one of these bench top model ones. But these, uh, if you go with a name brand, like... Uh, if you go like in the Northern Tool catalog, I think there's an Oregon Tools one in there. Is it Oregon Tools? I can't think of the name. That it's a you know famous manufacturer of stuff for the uh, for uh, wood cutting and stuff, chainsaws, accessories, chains, that kind of stuff. Uh, anyways, it's like two fifty, two hundred and fifty bucks or something like that. And I had noticed that a lot of people actually rated this very high, even though this has got to be a cheap piece of junk because, A, uh, it supposedly lists for $49.95, which they never sell it for. It's always on sale. In the latest catalog that came in, it was on sale for $34.95. And for those of you who don't know, if you sign up to have catalogs mailed to your house, um you can get on their list and they will send you the catalog and in the catalog every flyer that they send you there is usually i think always a super coupon they call it 
It's good for 20% off any one item in the store. So this was $34.95 on sale, and I used my 20% off super coupon, and I ended up getting this thing with tax for under $30. So um, I'm not going to unpack it now, but I read the reviews online, and a lot of people really like this thing. And you know what? I don't do uh, wood cutting for a living. Uh, so for the amount of wear and tear I'm going to put on this thing, it might actually last me a decent amount of time. I'm, I'm pretty confident I'm going to be able to get my 30 bucks out of this thing. All right, enough of that. Let's get to, uh, let's get to the main event here. All right, so this package came in yesterday, but I haven't gotten around to opening it up yet. This is from uh, Texas, from Gentleman, Texas, that uh, I think I met through the Hobby Machinist website, one of their forums, back when I put out a, uh, put out a call for uh, some CA-sized holders for my Alora's tool post. And he struck up a discussion before Christmas, and probably, I don't know, might have even been in November. But he's the gentleman that I ended up buying three holders from, and uh, those came in, and I was really happy with those. And he had given me an inventory of everything he had. He, this, we had a problem with shipping last time. The box got kind of lost, and it took forever to get here finally did show up. It was a miracle that everything was still inside. So he promised me this time he would do a better job of packing and he sure did because this thing, um, this has got that fiberglass reinforced tape. All right, so what he ended up selling me that I wanted was this Genuine Aloris CA-71 holder. And this is a holder for um, Alora's cutoff and grooving blades. And one of these recently came up on eBay and the seller actually was claiming that it was brand new. And I don't know, it may very well have been. It looked really in, in good shape. And I want to say it, it was only like $59, which is a really good deal if you're looking for one. <laughs> And I came across it on eBay and I was like, gee whiz, I said, that, that's a heck of a deal. But I said, you know what, before I buy that, I'm going to touch base with the gentleman who sold me the other holders. Because first, he did me a square deal on those other holders, I think. Oh, all right, so it's actually the next evening. I uh, have a bit of a learning curve here to deal with on this uh, shooting in full HD and rendering the video in full HD. Takes, uh, takes longer to render the video. File sizes are much larger. I'm running out of hard drive space on my desktop. And it's actually a pretty good size hard drive, but the problem is that I've got all of the previous, uh, all of my previous YouTube videos are archived on that hard drive. Well, most of them. I've started offloading those onto uh, thumb drives because um, uh, I need to put them somewhere. I can't burn them to uh, discs because, you know, the, the disc doesn't hold that much. So it would take me a month of Sundays to do that. Um, and then I just uploaded uh, today, I uploaded a 40 minute long um, yard sale flea market find type video. First one um, in all HD. Uh, it's the one where I actually introduced the camera. And that was almost, that was over six gigs, the file size. So I think that's going to be the last time you'll see a video that long. I think I'm going to have to limit my, my video segments to like 20 to 25 minutes tops in the future. And, you know, do multiple par parts like I've been doing because it just took forever. It actually took me like three or four tries. Um, and then finally what I found out was that um, I've got a Mac and the Safari browser apparently was the problem. Something wasn't right there. I have uh, Google Chrome on that Mac. So I uh, went to my YouTube account through the Google Chrome browser and was able to upload it. 
upload it that way. But it did, it took over four hours, and I'm on a broadband cable internet, so crazy. All right. Um, so where I was last night, I had just uh, talked about that uh, I had got in the CA71, um, and there was one uh, new old stock or like brand new out of the package on eBay cheap. But the reason why I ended up buying it from this gentleman was because when, when he originally told me about this, he said he had quite a few blades to go with it. So for those of you who don't know, uh, this is an Aloris 71250-2C2. Yeah, so uh, this blade basically is uh, supposed to be disposable. And um, apparently, uh, I guess the, the style with the replaceable tips is more popular. But when I originally contacted him uh, about what he had, and he told me that he had this holder, he told me he had extra blades. Well, lo and behold, he had 13 more brand new blades unopened. This is the only one that wasn't in packaging, and I think he said this was actually on the on the holder when he got it, and he never ended up using it. Uh, this has got a, a carbide cutter on it, and there's one on each end, so that when one end gets worn out or breaks, you can flip it around and use the other end. And uh, these are actually considered disposable. So, um, Unlike the other style of blade that they have where there's actually a notch and there's a replaceable carbide tip, these are supposed to be thrown away. These actually were really expensive. I think these may have been phased out even. Uh, no, I think I did still find these on the Allure's website, but apparently it's much more popular to buy the type of blade with a replaceable tip. All right, so I think, uh, why don't I try this out on the old, old Vernon lathe, and I'll, I'll take a stab at uh, doing some cutting it and grooving. One of the more difficult operations to do on a lathe for a novice, or for anybody, I guess, for that matter. Or so I've heard. All right, so I don't know if you're supposed to take this stuff off before you start cutting, or whether or not it's okay to just let this stuff fly. You know, <laughs> I'm assuming you're supposed to take it off. Can't see any harm in taking it off ahead of time. You know, the design of this disposable blade is very similar to the design of the type with the replaceable t uh, tips, as far as it's you know got a notch that that sits in. All right, so this is going to go on here like this. that. Oh, I'm sure the, ideally you don't want this sticking out any further than you absolutely have to have it sticking out, right? So, I'm going to have it stick out that much there. Then it's just an Allen screw in the back here that you tighten and that draws this wedge-shaped piece in. And that's actually what tightens this thing. It's kind of neat. Like the other holders that I got from this gentleman, this one came in with this ball on the top here. I had uh, mentioned it uh, in the video where I showed the other holders uh, how I thought that was really kind of cool because it, it does two things. It makes it, it gives you something to grab onto to take the uh, tool post on and off instead of grabbing onto the threads. And then the other thing that's great about it is if you're reaching past this, you're not going to like hit the back of your hand on the on the sharp uh, relatively sharp threads of the uh, of the stud. So I was wondering about these and it turns out I think I actually ended up finding them on the Allure's website. I think they do in fact. I think this is actually is a genuine Allure's part. A little option. And I forgot how much they are, but I don't remember how much they were, but it's kind of nice that that's an extra bonus that he's got these on there. I gotta check the list of what he's got left and see. I might just buy some more stuff. 
All right, let's try this out.